<clears throat> Good morning. Uh, see, uh, we will continue today's lecture uh, with looking at in details. Uh, what is that procedure is uh, uh, given by Raoul stability criterion in order to look at the stability of the system. So that's exactly where we stopped from there. We will start, right? So let me share my uh, uh, Active Inspire board. So hope you are able to see the screen. And uh, in the last class, we were just looking at uh, the general state space equations of multiple input, multiple output system. And uh, we understood the significance of state matrix there. Of course, you can also represent the state equation uh, into a block reduction diagram as for a time uh, control system, uh, linear control system. Right? So we just have looked at uh, the Laplace transform is uh, a convenient method of uh, converting this uh, differential equations uh, uh, which are there in state equation and output equation into a uh, algebraic equation. Uh, so you are able to have your Laplace trans, uh, 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 your uh, uh, transfer function of the system defined by uh, uh, this A, B, C, and D matrices, right? And we just have examined with the known uh, second order system, which is a vibratory system, and we were able to get our transfer function using that. So we just have uh, gone till this uh, obtaining transfer function of the system using state matrix. And then uh, we were looking at uh, uh, how can you apply that on our bicycle model. So these are the two equations which are the governing equation of our bicycle model for pure cornering. And we had taken out our game matrix, and then we look at uh, what is called uh, uh, equilibrium of our bicycle model. So that can be in stable equilibrium or unstable equilibrium. Uh, so if it is to be in stable equilibrium, uh, it would have some uh, um, disturbance or the initial condition zero condition you will have some oscillation and that oscillation will settle down uh, quickly uh, due to some damping nature of the system and you would get your steady state of static equilibrium or stable equilibrium that you say so unstable equilibrium is something that uh, uh, when you give a smaller disturbance to the system and uh, you are uh, response would grow uh, away from uh, the expected uh, stable equilibrium and it won't return back to its equilibrium position and that is what is we call it as an unstable uh, equilibrium so the best example are uh, the physical uh, uh, scenario of your vehicle subjected to a sudden wind gust uh, where the vehicle undergo uh, unstable state is what is the oversteered tendency of the vehicle suddenly you see that if your vehicle is uh, in a straight path at uh, uh, higher speeds and the speed happens to be your critical speed, then you would not be able to have a, a directional stability of your vehicle. And that is what is called an unstable state of your vehicle. So this is to understand, we just have looked at the nth order system, the generic case, uh, where uh, uh, the uh, governing differential equation is of order n and with coefficient a0 to an equal to zero so when i make equal to zero that means i do not give any input or it is zero initial condition state um, then uh, i would uh, uh, that is equivalent to doing a perturbation analysis or uh, predicting its natural characteristic free vibration analysis so uh, see that this nth order system can be uh, um, splitted into n n n first order system uh, and then uh, we were able to have that uh, polynomial, uh, what is called the characteristic polynomial, and that should be equal to zero to get non-trivial solution. And that is what is called the characteristic equation. When you make characteristic polynomial equating to zero, that's called the characteristic equation of the system. And uh, if, since it is a nth order system, so you'd have n roots. So the n roots can be uh, uh, lying on your complex plane, on left to half plane, then the system is stable even if one or two uh, one uh, root is there on the right half plane then you see that system is going to be unstable state so this is what uh, you would get by solving the roots but raw stability criteria uh, provide you without solving the roots of this equation 
you can go ahead of talking on its absolute stability. So what is that? So these coefficient values are supposed to be positive values. So those positive values uh, ensures that the roots uh, of this characteristic polynomial would lie on the left half plane of the complex plane. So that ensures the stability. <laughs> right? So uh, that's what we were uh, putting it for our um, characteristic uh, equation of our bicycle model where that was expressed as a squared plus some uh, value of s plus a constant term equal to zero. So um, where you get your si minus a determinant is what is this polynomial. So if you have your uh, physical system, you represent that into a state uh, by state equation. The state matrix is very uh, uh, convenient matrix to get your characteristic uh, equation. Right, uh, and that characteristic equation coefficient a naught a one a two supposed to be positive, and uh, that is what is uh, said by Rao stability criteria. If they are positive, you can say they are. It is an absolute uh, stable system. Uh, if uh, you have one coefficient is negative or one coefficient is zero, then you say that uh, cannot be uh, in stable state. So if that is so, what, how do you go about uh, looking at a system unstable? How can you prevent and so on or requirement and that is where the Rao stability criterion has got its significance. So see that uh, uh, in our bicycle model, if you have to employ this, A naught is one because we express our characteristic polynomial like that. So what is the characteristic polynomial that we have uh, uh, is what I will uh, start with the doing today's class. So do you uh, have your characteristic polynomial? Uh, so we we were looking at it. See, uh, that's what is from the state matrix. So you see here, uh, uh, bicycle model state matrix. So A naught is what? So you are going to have this uh, uh, determinant here. Si minus A determinant as A naught s squared plus a1 s plus a2 so this a naught is one a naught is one so it's positive and a1 a1 is given by minus of a11 plus a a11 plus a12 right so look at here uh, you have Minus a11 term is negative term, a22 uh, term also is negative term. So that sum will be again uh, multiplied by minus sign here. So that's going to be positive. Whereas a2 is what uh, uh, will be given by uh, what was a2? Uh, we were doing in the last class, right? So that's here. So A2, uh, yeah, A2 is what is given by A11, A22 minus A12, A21. So that was minus A11, A22 minus A12, A21. So when you do this, this can be negative. And if that is so, then you should uh, see the condition for to avoid uh, uh, negative value of that coefficient. That is what we were doing in the last class. Uh, and uh, we were getting this A2 value is this. So finally, this A2 value has comes out to be like this. So this A2 value was 1 plus K3 U square. And this has to be greater than 0. And you know in this K3 is what is stability factor. Stability factor and uh, the stability factor here is negative, then it is uh, oversteer tendency is what we have seen uh, in our steady state um, uh, uh, equation itself. So if this K3 is stability factor and it's negative. So you see that uh, this one minus, so this is going to be what? One minus uh, uh, some value of, uh, some value into U square. So this value K3 is what we have seen typically minus 0 0.0175 radians, right? 
So if we take that here, um, uh, this value, so the, there is a U, when U value is zero, then it is going to be positive, correct? When, uh, means you are not driven. So when you have smaller speeds, uh, you see that this product uh, still can be positive. At one point of time, this uh, uh, K3 U squared is going to be one. At that time, it's going to be zero. So after that, uh, uh, any value of that speed is going to be negative. So that is what is providing you a condition that uh, your critical speed is what is given by minus 1 by K3. So minus K3, uh, K3 values happen to be minus, you have a, a critical speed. So till that speed, uh, the system is stable. Beyond that speed, the system is unstable, is what you have to understand from this. <coughs> So this is what we were done in the last class. Today's class, we will just go in looking at if it happens to be of nth order system, how this raw stability criteria is applied and solve some uh, one or two simple case problems to understand this. Then we get into transient response study. So this is lecture number. Thirty two. And today's date is 16 04 2021. So, what is that today we are going to see is Rao stability criteria. Rao stability criteria. So uh, this criterion says, uh, see, we have just to looked at our closed loop transfer function, which is x of s by e of s. And that would be, what is that we have seen? B naught s power m plus B1 s power m minus 1 plus and so on plus B m minus 1 s plus B m divided by a naught s power n plus a1 s power n minus 1 plus and so on plus a n minus 1 s plus a n. So you would have your transfer function as a ratio of two polynomials. In this, the order of numerator polynomial will be less than or equal to n, less than or equal to n, where n is order of uh, denominator polynomial. So if m is less than n, it is strictly proper transfer function. It is called strictly proper transfer function, right? So in this denominator polynomial is what is called characteristic polynomial. So this is characteristic polynomial equating to zero is what is equivalent to uh, applying on your differential equation of nth order, the Laplace transform with the zero initial conditions. Uh, uh, what you get is uh, your um, uh, characteristic polynomial. So this characteristic polynomial a naught s power n plus a1 s power n minus 1 plus a2 s power n minus 2 plus and so on plus a n minus 1 s plus a n equating to 0 is what is called a characteristic equation. This is what is called characteristic equation. Characteristic equation. So now this characteristic equation would give me n roots and those end roots are lying on left half plane, then the system is stable, absolutely stable that I could say. But that is not uh, uh, sufficient. So that is of course a necessary condition for stability, what is called an absolute stability, but that's not sufficient. You require uh, conditions further. So what are those conditions? Uh, is what we have to look at it. And that is what we were seeing that uh, critical velocity is given by minus 1 by k3. So your vehicle speed should not go beyond that speed, uh, even though you have these all terms are positive coefficients, right? So that is a uh, uh, best example that you could see. So now 
what is the procedure is followed uh, in is what is the advantage of wrong stability criterion is i do not require to find out the roots n roots of this uh, polynomial n order polynomial see you know if it is quadratic equation you can find the roots easy minus b plus or minus and root of b is n minus 4 ac by 2 a that you are writing it and you are able to get to so cubic equation to somewhat um, workable but if you have nth order polynomial like that to finding n roots it's going to be a complex process at that time it is easier to comment on stability by this raw stability criteria so what is important uh, first step in this criterion is ensuring that this an is not zero if this an is not zero says what there is no zero roots of the system so zero roots are not present that is what is uh, 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 to ensure uh, you have to have an is not equal to zero in this characteristic polynomial equation 1 right any zero roots has been uh, 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 removed that is the meaning of it so what does that in a step 2 that uh, has been done is this if any of these coefficients step 2 if any of these coefficients if any of the coefficients any of the coefficients that means what are those coefficient a is a not a1 a2 up to an any of the coefficients are zero zero are negative are negative the presence of one positive coefficient in presence of right so if any of the coefficients are zero or negative in presence of of one positive coefficient a root or roots exist one root or number of roots exist exist that are imaginary that are imaginary or that have positive real parts or that have positive real parts that means complex roots therefore in such cases system is not stable therefore we can say system is not stable but it's very clear see if i have a quadratic equation if one is negative you see that one root may be having a negative root or the roots can be of complex conjugate roots with the um, complex roots with the negative uh, with the positive uh, real part so in such cases you were some roots or uh, many number of roots in case of n roots would lie on the right half plane so that uh, you would see that uh, the system is unstable that is how you can just comment on that but not that all coefficients must be positive correct see uh, positive this is a necessary condition having all the coefficients positive as a necessary condition but not sufficient to assure the stability that's what we were saying so now step 3 so how do you identify how do you identify right uh, the uh, roots uh, how many negative roots are there how many positive roots are there to see so if all coefficients are positive right if all coefficients are positive then also the system can go into uh, unstable state that's what we were saying that how do you identify them is what is important if all coefficients if all coefficients are positive positive arrange the coefficients of polynomial 
in rows and columns as follows. Arrange the coefficients of polynomial as follows. As follows. So how do you arrange that is this way. So you will have now uh, um, a naught to s power n top, right? So let me have here the column with the s power n first element, s power n minus 1, s power n minus 2, s power n minus 3, and so on up to s squared, s power 1, s power 0. So if I have uh, n third system, this column uh, uh, number of elements will be n plus one elements. So then let us arrange it now uh, your elements like this, coefficients like this. So first to take this coefficient uh, a naught, a two, a four, a six. So all even number coefficients. Arrange them in the first row of this. Uh, array and then second uh, uh, s power n minus 1 suppose i have uh, fourth order uh, differential equation then i have here uh, s power 4 s cube so in s cube i will have all this uh, uh, odd odd uh, terms coefficients a1 a3 a5 and so on like this so this of course a7 and so on so now, how do I get this element? So here itself is over arranging my all coefficients, right? All even numbers and all odd numbers in the second row. And then I will get my B1 here. This B1 would be obtained by this way. This B1 would be obtained like this. So it is out of this uh, array. So just uh, uh, I am working out here. How do I get my B1? So this B1 would be obtained like this a1 a2 minus a naught a3 by a1 so that would be a1 a2 minus a naught a3 by a1 that's what is b1 so what is my b2 so b2 would be a1 a4 a1 a4 minus a naught a5 by a1 so a1 a4 minus a naught a5 by a1 so that is uh, my b2 so you would say now what is b3 so b3 will be a1 a6 a1 a6 minus a naught a7 by a1 that's my b3 so like that i would fill now this Next column, how do I fill C1? So C1, when I take, it is B1 A3 minus A1 B2 by B1. So C1 would be B1 A3 minus A1 B2 by C1. Right? And C2 would be C2 would be B1 A5 B1 a5 see this is b1 this is not c1 this is b1 a1 b5 sorry a1 uh, b1 a5 minus a1 b3 b1 a5 minus a1 b3 by b1 is what is c2 like that i can get my c3 so this process to continue till it comes to zero. So that would come till here. So if that is so, let us also write it for B1. So if I have here S n minus S power n minus 4, then I will have D1. So you would say correctly now D1 would be C1 B2 minus B1 C2 by C1. So D1 would be C1 b2 minus b1 c2 by c1 so like this you can keep doing till this uh, last term filled right 
So now you have here how many number of rows like this if you have for nth order system for nth order equation I would have there will be there will be n plus one rows n plus one rows. So this calculation of B1, B2, B3 will continue till I get zero value. There is a zero value going to be. Similar C1, C2, C3 till I get zero value. Like that I will keep doing it. So this will be an array uh, in a triangular fashion it will be. Right? Uh, so this pattern would be quite useful to find out uh, is there any negative roots? Uh, ne negative roots. So how do you find out that? That would be found out from number of changes in the sign. Number of changes that you see. So that is what is uh, uh, Rouse stability criterion states. So what is the statement of this? Is that number of roots of the equation with the positive real parts is equal to the number of changes in sign with the coefficients. All right. In the first column of this uh, array, and uh, becomes and it be, and becomes to state all the terms of the first column of the array have positive sign. So uh, what is this one minute? Uh, here power cut also. So uh, when you have this. Uh, n root see i have these columns see if these all columns are of positive values then uh, uh, there is so what is that the statement is the number of roots of this equation with the positive real parts is equal to the number of changes in signs You may also please refer this textbook Vogata after this class uh, to uh, read this uh, Rouse stability criterion. I have taken reference from there and uh, written down my notes. Uh, so I have some doubts now. No, no. Yeah. Uh, sir, please say that Vogata uh, textbook, sir. You are not getting it. Uh, you have to get through uh, this. Uh, no, okay, I will share it. Right? Just uh, minute. So we will take an example problem, then it is easier to solve. Right? Uh, then we will understand this. Instead of writing down this all procedure, we will take an example problem, and then uh, with respect to that, if you solve. Uh, you would be able to talk on this stability. So if we have this first column, what is that uh, statement is if we have this first column, uh, uh, of this array that means this column you are, you are calculating so this first column array these all values are of same sign then all are positive roots so that will ensure the absolute stability of the system in case you have some check sign changes that many number of uh, uh, roots with the real parts that are existing so roots with the real parts are there. What would happen? That would come on the right half plane. So that is what is that the Rao stability criterion statement. So if you have to look at an absolute stability of the system without finding the roots of the uh, characteristic polynomial of nth order system, then you prepare this uh, array called Rao stability array. So in this, uh, how do you prepare this array is what just I have explained. So you would have this first column you would have this first column elements all are of same sign 
say positive signs that means uh, all the roots are uh, going to be on left half plane what do you mean by that the roots can be uh, of uh, uh, negative uh, real roots or the roots can be or complex roots with the negative real part so that is the meaning um, in case uh, you have uh, some sign changes that means the first three elements a not a1 b1 are positive whereas c1 is negative that means the b1 to c1 there is a sign change again d1 is positive c1 to d1 sign change so there are two sign changes that means positive to negative and negative to positive so the two sign changes says that there are two roots in this n roots are having positive real part correct positive real part so if uh, you have a positive real part it is obvious that in your complex plane that would be on the right half plane so this is right half plane and this is left half plane and uh, this is your s plane or complex plane called right so you will have here positive real number here negative real numbers and this is minus plus j omega and this is minus j omega so the roots the end roots can be um, placed on this plane so when it is real roots it will be on horizontal line when it is imaginary roots complex conjugate roots then it will be on a, a vertical axis when it is happen to be complex root it will be either left of plane or right of plane on this quadrants so if we have got all the roots lying on the left half plane that ensures the stability of the system if one root comes on the right half plane also that is not going to be a stable system so how many roots are there on the right half plane can be determined without solving the roots of the equation is what is rao stability criterion so that is what is explained in this array so as you get this array filled for the coefficients a not to an then uh, you would be able to get b1 c1 b1 row c1 row d1 rows all then you look at first column if all elements are of same sign positive sign then all the roots are lying on the left half plane if you have sign changes for example b1 is negative a1 is positive and c1 is positive then there's one sign change from a1 to b1 again b1 to c1 there are two roots which will have real uh, negative uh, positive real part that means it will be on this side so system is unstable so you can comment on that so if that is so let us just look at now some examples and then we will understand so let us take this characteristic uh, polynomial i am not going to describe you the physical system instead it is a mathematical class like that you can take and uh, first example we have this s power 4 plus 2 s cube plus 3 s squared plus 4 s plus 5 that's equal to 0 so this is what is now uh, uh, by observation you can say since it is s power 4 it is fourth order system system characteristic uh, equation fourth order system characteristic equation so now uh, mm, how do you get uh, um, its stability analysis without finding the roots there are four roots i don't want to solve for the roots instead i want to tell whether it is a, a stable or unstable system so what i should do i should start from here s power 4 s cube s squared s or 1 s power 0 so see fourth order i have total of five elements n plus 1 elements in the first column so first row would be uh, now this so this is equivalent to what a not a1 a2 a3 a4 right so the coefficients here uh, this is same as so you may write this so that you will uh, a not s power 4 plus a1 s cube plus a2 s square plus a3 s plus a4 s power 0 into 5 that's equal to 0 like that if we have then i can write here so now what is that i should do a not so a not coefficient here is 1 next a2 that is 3 next uh, a6 
is a4 a4 right this is a4 i'm sorry this is a4 a4 uh, a4 a4 is this constant itself, right? A4 is this constant, into 5 is not. A4 in this constant, S power 0 is 1. So A4 is this constant itself, so that's 5. So this is my first row. My second row elements are A1, so A1 correspondingly here 2, and A3, so A3 corresponds to 4, and there is no A6, so this is 0. So this is how first I should fill this. Now I can find this term B1, so which will be, 2 into, so what is B1? So 2 into 3 minus 1 into 4 by 2. So that's going to be 6 minus 4 by 2. So it is 2 by 2, which is 1. So this term is 1. Next, uh, this element, so that would be B2, which will be 2 into 5 minus 1 into 0 by 2, that is 10 by 2, which is 5. So this term is 5. Right? So now again, uh, see here, I, I will not have a term. The next, uh, because B3 is not there, uh, I, I do not have here additional term. Then here, uh, uh, next I should get C1. So C1 would be B1, so it's 1 into 4 minus 2 into 5 by by 1. So that's 4 minus 10 by 1, which is minus 6. See, minus 6. I have minus 6. And uh, uh, this term, 1 minus 0, minus 0, minus 0, so that won't be there. So this is 0 here. Next to this term to get, that is D1. So D1 would be minus 6 into 5 minus 1 into 0 by minus 6. So that is minus 30 by minus 6 plus 5. So here I have plus 5. So this is how first you would complete your uh, raw stability array. Then you see here, see this first column. You have to look at now first column. In first column, you have all these elements are positive. That means uh, the system is stable, absolutely. But, but you see now it is not so. So though here the coefficients are positive, that is the necessary condition to talk on absolute stability, but that's not sufficient. That is where you should proceed further by doing this uh, and you can go ahead. So now here you see there will be one sign change here and then again from here another sign change. That means there are two roots with the real parts. So what do you mean by that? There are two roots with positive real parts real parts that is the meaning so uh, the system is not stable so the system is not stable right you can find those roots uh, and you can solve and then you see there will be two roots so that we can leave it. So you can have an another case to look at here. There can be zero. If I calculate this, if it happens to be zero here, what to do? So for that, let us take a, a second example problem. Um, it is of third order system. So S cube plus 2S squared plus S plus 2 equals zero. So here, uh, uh, you see here, uh, all roots are positive. That is the necessary condition, but that's not sufficient. So let us investigate with the raw stability criterion. So what is that criterion? First arrange this S cube, S squared, S, S power zero. So third order system, there are four elements in the first column, and uh, this is equivalent to A naught, S cube, plus A1 S squared plus A2 S plus A3. So now uh, I have to put A1, A0, A2. So A0 is 1, uh, A2 is also 1. And A1 is 2, A3 is 2. So this is that. So now if you look at my B1, 
that would be 2 minus 2 by 2. So that's 0. So this element is 0. Then what is my C1? 0 minus 0 by 0. So in such cases, what to do? When you get 0 like that, what to do? So assume that uh, instead of 0, a small value epsilon. So replace this 0 by a small value epsilon where epsilon is a very small value, very small, very small positive value, positive number. Assume like that. If you assume like that, then C1 would be what? C1 would be uh, 2 epsilon minus 2 into 0, 0 by epsilon. So I will get 2. So that is my value 2 here. So like that you would complete. So now uh, see here, uh, how do you uh, talk on your uh, stability? The first column term in any of the row is 0 like this. Right, but the remaining terms are not 0. There is uh, and there is, uh, see there is no 0 or there is no remaining terms, then the zero term is replaced by a very small positive number epsilon and uh, the rest of the array is completed, evaluated. After this you evaluate, now you, what you have to do is, uh, what is your comment on this is this. You would have positive conjugate roots. If the sign of the coefficient above this zero or above this epsilon, is same as that of the below, it indicates that uh, one pair of imaginary roots exist. Let me write that statement because that's important. If the sign of the coefficients above zero above the zero or what we defined as epsilon small number is the same as that below it below it it indicates indicates that there are a pair of imaginary root imaginary roots so in this case yes will be equal to plus or minus j for the equation that you can see so if i have three roots if i look at i would have uh, s is equal to this so that can be uh, easily looked at in this uh, if it's all so uh, see that I would get back since this is given you can cross check that so if I have uh, this two pair of imaginary roots my two roots are s plus j into s minus j right these are the two roots um, by this statement so third root would be s plus two it's known now I just have found so this is there so this is equal to 0. If you work out this, it will end with the S Q plus 2 S square plus S plus 2 equal to 0. Or you can solve this in calculator. Uh, this cubic polynomial you can put and find these three roots. You would get one positive root and then uh, two um, complex conjugate roots. So that is how you would say. So when you prepare, your, uh, this is the condition. When you prepare, you have a zero in one of the element, replace it by small number and continue to complete your Rao's array. After that, you see that uh, how many, uh, what are the signs above zero uh, row? Uh, is there the same sign is there below? This two is positive, here also is positive. So that means there exists one pair of imaginary roots. That's the conclusion. Right. So let us again go for uh, next example 
you may ask them so in case uh, the sign changes below that what would happen right if there is uh, how do you account that is uh, uh, one sign change you have to remove this one sign change and the second sign change like that and then that many number of roads would be there on the uh, with the positive uh, uh, real part so that to understand let me just give you on another polynomial so take this polynomial this is, this is third example uh, with the s cube minus 2s plus 2 s cube minus 3s plus 2 equals 0. see we have to look at this order 3 and there is a term missing here so rewrite this once again as s cube plus 0 s squared minus 3s plus 2 equals 0. so my a naught in this case is 1 a1 is 0, a2 is minus 3, a3 is 2. So I would be now able to have Rouse array s squared s power 1 s naught and fill this 1 minus 3, 0, 2. So this element would be 0 minus 2 by 0. So you would have b1 term what is that you will have b1 so since here you have a zero i have to replace this by a small number right that is what you have to do because it's undefined zero minus two by zero uh, so it is going to infinity so that is uh, to avoid that uh, if it is zero let us consider instead of zero it's the smallest uh, positive number epsilon if that is so my b1 would be minus 3 epsilon minus 2 by epsilon so that's going to be uh, that's going to be minus 3 minus 2 by epsilon so if i take minus sign out it is 3 plus 2 by epsilon so minus of 3 plus 2 by epsilon in this case and then <laughs> what is my s naught so this minus here it's zero by this so it is c1 would be minus 3 plus 2 by epsilon into 2 minus 0 by minus 3 plus 2 by epsilon so i would get a positive 2 c1 is 2 this is 2 so now you look at I have this zero element that's become positive number here. So now how do I consider? <clears throat> I should consider, I should neglect this. I should see here it is positive. After this, it is negative. So above is positive, below is negative. So there is one sign change, right? One sign change. Again, this negative and this is positive. There is an again a sign change, minus. So there are two sign changes. <coughs> when you have two sign changes, we'll have two roots with the positive real parts two roots with the positive real parts that you can just uh, see that from this given example so given an equation is s cube minus 2 3s plus 2 equals 0 so in this uh, if i factorize so this is going to be uh, s plus sorry s minus 1 s minus 1 into s minus 1 into s plus 2 that's equal to 0 so i have here s minus 1 whole square s plus 2 equals 0 so i have uh, three roots where s is equal to minus 2 negative real part root and s is equal to plus 1 and plus 1 so two a pair of real roots that exist on the uh, with the positive real part so in your s plane I would have one root at minus two, another root at plus one. So here I'll have two roots. So this is one root S1 and this is S2, S3. So two roots at plus one I have. <clears throat> so since there are two roots on the right half plane, system is unstable. That is how you can comment on this. So interestingly, uh, that can there can be a chance that you would have entire row 
in this process can become zero. In such cases, what to do? That is the next example. Example number four. So look at, uh, let me take a fifth order equation. S power five plus two S power four plus 24 S cube plus 48 S squared minus 25 S minus 50, that's equal to zero. That is equal to zero. So in this case, uh, one can say now, one can say uh, this is stable system or unstable system. How do you say that? Can you say is it a stable system or unstable system? Can anyone? So, Mesh Satish is present. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, can you just say that is the system a stable or unstable system? Hmm. You have been listening to me or not? So, me, Shatish, are you? Sir, stable system. How do you say stable system? What is the reason? What is the first criteria for absolute stability to talk on? You should have all these coefficients. So, what does A naught now? 1, A1 is 2, A3 is 24, A4 is 48. A5 in this case minus 25 and A6 minus 50. So there are two coefficients negative sign. So that is uh, readily says that it is not stable system. But you can make the system stable if you are going to impose uh, Rao's stability criterion and there uh, all columns to be positive what to do. Here there are only numbers given. So you just to say the system mathematically stable or unstable. This is an unstable system. If I have this coefficients are dictated by parameters like in bicycle model that you have seen, um, that entire parameter mass, mass moment of inertia, A, B, L, C alpha, F, C alpha, R, and the forward speed, all are there. So that's where the stability factor has come. So the stability factor was deciding the coefficient uh, uh, value. Uh, uh, is it positive or negative uh, to talk on stability? So uh, you are able to uh, avoid unstable state uh, uh, if we are able to understand the physical system and their influencing parameters. But whenever uh, uh, to some methods to learn, today's class I am just giving you an example where the coefficients are determined values. But this value of minus 25, minus 50 is where maybe depends upon some influencing parameter of the physical system. And this equation I am not representing equivalent to some physical system like the quadratic equation we had for a bicycle model. That has to be kept in mind. If we have kept that in mind, now by looking at this, since there are two negative values here, you could say immediately the system is unstable, over. So, uh, but why did I give this problem is just to have an understanding of how do you go about uh, um, stating that uh, further in detail with the Rao's stability criteria. So let us just work out and see that. So it's going to be how many elements in the first column? Six elements. So s power 5, s power 4, s cube, s square, s power 1, so 0. So first column is a naught, that's 1, a3, sorry, a2, I, I missed a2. This is a2, this is a3, this is a4, this is a5. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six elements. So A naught to A five, that's correct. So A naught is one, then A two is twenty four, and uh, A four is minus twenty five. There is no A six. Then A one two, A three forty eight, and uh, A five minus fifty. 
so this is first to be filled then i will get my b1 so b1 would be uh, 2 into 24 minus 1 into 48 by 2 so that's 48 minus 48 0 by 2 that's 0 so this term is 0 then b2 term would be 2 into minus 25 that's minus 50 minus of minus plus 50 by 2 so again this is 0 so this term is 0 so since we have these two terms are 0 what does that you understand from that hmm? what does that you understand from that and this would happen always in odd number rows you will see that is s3 is odd number rows it will happen so this is uh, uh, when it comes how do you proceed completing the rest of the elements so for that what you have to do is you have to consider an axillary polynomial you have to consider an axillary polynomial right uh, axillary polynomial what is an axillary polynomial here is uh, is this in such cases uh, you have to consider an axillary polynomial with the coefficients of the last row and by using the coefficients of the derivatives of this polynomial in the next row so uh, your polynomial here axillary polynomial p of s would be now what does that uh, last row here since it's zero this is so that is going to be uh, three terms are there so it is uh, it is with the s power 4 so we will start with the 2 s power 4 and uh, what is the next term plus 48 s square minus 50 is what is axillary polynomial what is axillary polynomial so i have to take uh, these coefficients and uh, write the corresponding polynomial and take this derivative dp s by ds that's going to be 8s q plus 96s and that uh, remaining zero so this is the term so this term should be now used this term should be used now in place of my third column so instead of this zero i should now take here it is 8 and here it is 96 so i have used here axillary polynomial right and then take this as zero then you continue doing this so this term now would be 8 into 48 that is c1 so 8 into 48 minus 2 into 96 divided by 8 so what is that you would have you would have 24 so this value is now 24 and uh, similarly 8 into c2 c2 will be 8 into minus 50 minus 2 into 0 by 8 so that's going to be minus 50 so this element is minus 50 and then this element can be filled which is d1 so that's 24 into 96 minus of minus this plus by 24 that's again a positive value and that value has comes out to be 112.7 and the zero again if i work out this into this minus zero by this so it's going to be minus 50 see look at now my first column in this first column i have my all these elements are positive except the last one so there is one sign change so if there is one sign change there is one root with the positive real part or it is a positive root itself so system is unstable 
So you can just to find out that uh, roots. Uh, you have done it mathematically how to find out roots of the system. So if we find out that roots, uh, you would have now for this. Uh, so if we solve for this auxiliary polynomial, you'll have roots S is equal to plus or minus one, and S is equal to plus or minus five J. So there are four roots. When uh, you solve for this uh, auxiliary polynomial, 2 s power 4 minus, sorry, plus 48 s square minus 50. So solve this that you have four roots, and these four roots are going to be uh, uh, for that uh, given polynomial as well. The fifth root would be uh, found out uh, now, and that happens to be s is equal to minus 2. S is equal to minus 2. So you see here, S is equal to minus 2 is negative real part that will lie on the uh, left half plane. And S is equal to plus 1 and minus 1. So minus 1 will be here, my another root. And uh, one root would be here, that is uh, real root. So that is why it is unstable state. Unstable. Unstable. And you have the other roots plus or minus 5j. So plus 5j minus 5j. So these complex roots uh, are referring to an oscillation in the system, right? So it is clear that the original equation has got one root with a real uh, positive part. So it is unstable system. So like that you can apply Rao stability criteria and find the uh, stability of the system. So if we are uh, asked in the examination purpose, I can give you some uh, uh, polynomial like that and ask you to find out what is the uh, system stability and so on. That is one side. But this uh, Rao stability criteria is quite useful if you have described your physical system and then you have derived your uh, characteristic polynomial. So how these characteristic polynomial are, are derived? It's basically from SI minus A determinant. So equating to zero. So this is what is giving you characteristic polynomial. Sorry, characteristic equation. Say that is characteristic equation, right? Polynomial on the left hand side equating to zero is characteristic equation. So this characteristic equation is obtained from the state matrix. The state matrix would have all the uh, influencing parameters in it that we have witnessed in bicycle model, right? So with that, uh, we will just stop stability analysis of your uh, your plane model, uh, bicycle model, or uh, the theory required, uh, control theory required. Uh, especially this uh, uh, Rao stability criterion and this is for again linear time invariant system that we are using it right yeah so with that note to today's class let me stop and tomorrow we will have as usual Wednesday uh, 9 to 10 and again uh, one period uh, our virtual class period so that I would uh, complete uh, you transient response analysis how do you carry out right yeah so if you have any doubts, you can ask. Otherwise, I'll stop at this time. Uh, the memory uh, of that uh, would be something more, the textbook. Anyhow, I will try to post it in the uh, MS Teams. Right? Tomorrow I will be going to college, then I will do that. Uh, and your CAT examination syllabus is still whatever that I have covered till Monday's class. So after that, whatever I'm doing, it will be all for your FAT examination, including today's class. Uh, so uh, this coming uh, CAT exam that is on this Monday, you no need to worry about stability of your uh, system. So this is all whatever I'm teaching is there for your final assessment test. So the syllabus is still whatever I have taught on Monday's class that is sufficient for your exam, right? So I'll stop recording at this point of time if you do not have any doubts. Do you have any doubts to ask? If not, I'll stop recording.